All right, I have an update on what's been going on with this pregnancy. Um, okay, so incarcerated uterus. The uterus gets stuck when it's trying to flip up. I'm at 13 weeks, three days today. I've had a catheter in for, I guess at this point, 24 hours. Um, but we went in this morning and... Uh, my uterus did not flip. So it's just very stubborn and is not wanting to move. So we have to schedule a procedure. They did call and we're getting in um, tomorrow. So I'm very thankful that it's very quick. And I'm also very thankful because this is being caught so early. If this was caught a little bit later, this would be a medical emergency. Like this would be a uh, emergency, like we got to do this. But right now... Baby looks great. Everything's okay. We just got to get into this procedure and apparently leave the catheter in for a week. Lovely. And um, I think she said to use, we'll have, I'll have to use a pessary, um, which I know like I, I've known, I've heard of these things being used for pelvic floor dysfunction and uh, for women um, older women who may have organ prolapse and it helps keep everything in place. But this also, I mean, you just, you just insert it and you can take it in and take it out, but it keeps the uterus from flipping back. So she said that she has had a couple of patients where, um, they, their uterus, she, they, they flipped the uterus and then a week or two later it flipped right back because baby wasn't big enough yet to kind of hold everything in place. Um, so I'll have to have that in, I think she said, until like anywhere from 18 to 20 weeks. So I'm comfortable, but it's like at the same time, we will do anything that we have to do for this baby. I have to say, having her try to flip my uterus yesterday was... That was terrible. That was the most, I mean, that was painful, uncomfortable. We had to switch positions. I was like, oh my God, this is happening right now. I mean, it was, I mean, it was, and it was a full on, like, it was so rough. Like I have been exhausted all day. I really have slept all day. Once we came home from the hospital or from the doctor, it was just like, I've, my body is just, everything hurts. And everything is sore from having tensed up from all of that because, of course, my adrenaline was running and pumping. And so I was, you know, shaking and just all of that. I mean, it was, um, it was intense. So, you know, I don't want to have to have a procedure done. I wish that, that my uterus could have flipped, but I will tell you this. Um, I'm thankful that I won't have to feel it. So whether or not, I don't know if they're going to have me go to sleep or just put a spinal in. I know that she said they'll decide tomorrow but it's like I I'd rather not be awake for this <laughs> like I just don't want to remember this I know you know I'll take whatever I can get at this point whatever is the safest for the baby you know whatever we got to do but man if I could just wake up and not have to remember that that would be great so I really feel like God has been really good to cover us every step of the way and um you know it it's been it's been hard because on one hand, of course, I want everything to go smoothly. I mean, we all do, you know, it's like we, you've been, it's like we've just been through enough. Like, I don't care if you've had loss or not. And pregnancy is rough. And that goes back to the scripture. And I think it's first, is it first or second Timothy? But it talks about how women, we gain our salvation through childbirth. And of course, it's not really talking about like our salvation is, is actually through Christ, <laughs> but it's actually talking about going through a spiritual transformation um, and, and really through the process of childbirth. And that's, again, loss or not. Childbirth is rough. Pregnancy is rough. You come to the end of yourself many times. Whether or not you, know, you have a smooth pregnancy or lots of complications, whatever. Like it's, it's, um, it's not easy. And so, um, cause I do feel like people who don't have these complications, like incarcerated uterus is not that common. So first of all, don't 
get worried. Okay. Don't be like, oh no, what if I said, listen, if you have a hard time peeing, pain with sex, you have things kind of going on that, you know, you're kind of concerned about, just bring it up to your doctor as soon as possible. Don't wait. Don't wait. Especially emptying your bladder. Like if you can't empty your bladder, like just get to the doctor. Um, but other than that, it's actually a very less common thing that happens. And of course, um, so you can hear all kinds of things on the internet and, you know, especially, you know, when you're pregnant and you've had loss, you can hear these things and just the fear and all of that creeps in. I think even worse than, you know, when you're pregnant and you haven't had loss, I I do think there is a difference, but either way, that fear wants to creep in and just be like, oh, well, what if, like, the truth is that none of us have control. That's the biggest thing in pregnancy and in childbirth. You don't have control. I don't have control. It is a complete relinquishing of control and submission. And you know it. You know you don't have control. You know you're at your weakest. You know you are at the whim of whatever's going to go down. You don't have control that is the hardest thing to go through um, as a woman. And you're like, well, what? Like, I can't do anything. I mean, so a lot of times the first time that we'll hear from the Holy Spirit or there will be like a huge spiritual breakthrough, it's actually in these times of pregnancy. It could be with loss. It could be with whatever. It doesn't mean that when we go through other things that we don't have encounters with God and we don't hear that. So I don't mean to diminish that. But there is something different about um, pregnancy and going through this. And so it is a, it's a wild ride. The thing that helps me is to remember that I've been chosen to walk this out. My husband and I have been chosen to walk this out. This baby has been chosen to walk this out. This is, um, you know, it kind of helps me. So if like, if I start feeling um, like I just want this to be easy, you know, the truth is that I've been chosen to walk this out. I am well equipped. This isn't a mistake. And um, so, you know, that to me, that always helps. I don't know if that helps anybody else, but, you know, we can compare other people and be like, well, they've had it easier. They've had it. And it's like, hold on for a second. I've been called to walk this out this way with God. So I can't compare. And I'm not less than because I'm having complications. I'm not, you know, it's it's not, it's either here nor there. It's, it's just... Um, this is what this looks like for me. And so I don't know if that helps anybody hear that, but sometimes we can really feel discouraged and like something's wrong with us and, you know, my body's failing me or this is happening. And it's like, hold on for a second. Let's take it in because there's a lot more going on than, than we even can comprehend. And I think, the hardest thing about this is we, we don't have control over what our body is doing. And I think, um, spiritually speaking, I think that is the hardest thing through all of this, especially when there has been loss. You think, oh man, something's wrong with me. Something's wrong. Hold on for a second. You know, so I just have to slow down those thoughts and, and it's okay to be honest with what you're thinking and give it to God. But also going to God and getting the truth well, what do you say about this, God? This is happening, but what do you say? And, you know, so that's always a redirect. Um, you want to know what God's will is. You go and seek God um, and find out his will. All that to say, I'm having that procedure done tomorrow. Um, so I'll keep you guys updated. And it was really cool to see baby ball doing flips and backflips and kicks and just living his or her best life through all of this. <laughs> It was absolutely wild.